Welcome to My Long Island TV. From Manhasset to Montauk, we have traveled our communities to bring you the following events. I'm your host, Waldo Cabrera. My Long Island TV starts now. Since 1933, scientists at the Cold Spring Harbor Laboratory have been conducting groundbreaking research. In keeping with that tradition, the U.S. Department of Defense honored Dr. Mikola Igoblad with the highly coveted $2.5 million Era of Hope Scholar Award for her studies on how cancers reseed themselves. So the Era of Hope Scholar Award is an award given to early stage breast cancer researchers, so that means the first six years after you get your first position. You get selected through a process where you first write in an, an application, and that application, I had a lot of help from uh, breast cancer survivors from uh, both the Manhattan Women's uh, Coalition Against Breast Cancer as well as from the West Islip Breast Cancer Coalition. So these two groups were helping me uh, thinking about my research from the perspective of a breast cancer survivor and that was really an interesting experience. With so much money on the line, the competition was fierce. This year there was I think 53 applications. Five people were invited to, to give their 10 minute speech and then two of us were selected. I know the other winner and she's doing some really interesting work but I'm more focusing on the therapy resistance and she's more focusing on where and when the cells are, are coming back. Since the research is on recurring cancers, the study will benefit a very specific group of people. We're really trying to go after the cancer patients that don't have any treatment options right now. That's the late stage breast cancer, the metastatic breast cancer, or metastatic disease. And that was in part uh, due to the interaction I had with the breast cancer survivors. What they of course are worried about is, is the cancer going to come back? And if it does, what are my options? Part of the funds will be used on a powerful new microscope and are building a dedicated research team. This microscope will allow us to go deeper into the tumors and so we won't just be looking at the very surface but also deeper into tumors and start to look at where the um, resistant cells originate from. In addition, the funds will directly fund the salary of six people in my group so it will really speed up how much we can do on this project. Now that she's better funded and better equipped, the Denmark native gets inspiration from the Danish army. In the Danish resistance, we didn't really have a big army that was overrun within the first few hours of the war, uh, the Second World War. So we couldn't go right off the headquarters, but what people could do instead was to uh, disable the um, supply lines that came and so they could go after the, the train lines, right? And so I think that targeting the macrophages by itself is not gonna be sufficient, but if you do that together with targets that go straight after the, the cancer cells, the headquarter, and then you target their supply lines, then I think together this will actually have an impact. But it's a long road from the battlegrounds in the laboratory to victory against Cancer Day. One part of the project is trying to use the mice to model different stages of uh, breast cancer. Breast cancer where we think that the tumor has spread but you don't really know. Uh, breast cancer where you know for sure that it is come back as metastatic cancer. And we're going to use these mice to see what kind of combinations of drugs would be effective in that case. Based on that we have clinical collaborators that hopefully can take it into clinical trials. But even within the same patient there's not one way to target a resistant cancer. When we think of therapy resistant Mostly we think about one patient, the response may be good and another patient that may not be good. But what we're starting to appreciate is that it often is one part of the tumor that will respond well and another part that will not. And so we can see that even in these, in these movies that there's regional differences in how they respond. Although progress is steady, Dr. Igerblad remains cautiously optimistic. When you read the history of, of cancer research, that you become very humble because there's been many times where people think they have a breakthrough and ultimately uh, the cancer found a way around and then developed resistance. And the, the breakthrough so far has been when you target T cells, but I think some of the next breakthroughs could be in targeting these inflammatory cells. And uh, with the ongoing trials, we, we're really hopeful that within the next very short time, a year or two, that there will be some changes in the type of treatments patients will give.